So, no, I, I wouldn't say I have a passion for HR. Welcome back to Human Resources for the People. It's a human capital revolution. Today we're going to be talking about an interesting court ruling out of the Third Circuit Court. Um, it rules that PTO is not part of a salary and win for employers. And I, we'll talk about this. I don't, I mean, this is sort of common sense as far as I'm concerned, but it, it went on. This article is from Cozen O'Connor. Uh, their uh, employment law firm linked down below. And the author was Benjamin Schechtman. Uh, check him out. It's a, 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 he seems to be a pretty good author, and I like what he writes. So the backstory on this article in this court case is Stephanie Higgins. She's a registered nurse for a company. They provide in-home health care. She was salaried so she and, and exempt, so she didn't have overtime uh, in excess of 40 hours. Um, you know, there are job duty requirements for uh, whether or not you're salaried or not. I have videos on them. Check them out. They're pretty interesting. It's important for people to know. Uh, but one of them uh, is one of the rules for it is that employees receive uh, every pay period weekly or less frequently all of their pay and it's not reduced by any means, right? So, the employee has to make at least $684 per week. Not a whole lot these days. Uh, in addition, again, they can't have their pay reduced in any capacity if you're salaried. So that means, for example, if you're sick and you have no more vacation and you miss a single day, uh, that that isn't comp or that is compensable as a salaried person. And it's one of the few benefits of being salaried that many people don't really recognize or don't really know, but it is important for people to understand. So why does this matter? Or how did this come to, to pass in this, uh, in this court case? Well, Beta, Beta, the employer, had a really strange policy and one that I've frankly never seen before. And what the policy was, was that employees... Uh, had to accumulate a specified number of productivity points per week, which was, you know, effectively 1.33 hours per point. And if they didn't meet their productivity points, they removed PTO and reduced it. Uh, the company deducted PTO time for employees who worked fewer hours and who were less productive, which is a very strange and sort of wild idea, uh, not one I'm used to, although I've never done piecework or had any sort of really uh, company where we've had productivity points uh, on, a, on any big scale. But this is really interesting. Never seen that before. Uh, so here, to be clear, if you're not hitting your numbers, specifically around hours, but if you're not hitting your numbers uh, with respect to productivity, you get some of your PTO taken away. I don't love this system, but I, I can see a world where it actually is, uh, you know, very beneficial. I guess it depends on how much PTO that they get. Uh, but because um, they, you know, require a certain amount of productivity and because the employer was, you know, removing the PTO and in effect, you know, removing this employee's pay, the argument from Higgins was that, you know, as a result, you're, you're, you know, deducing my pay, you're deducting my pay. And as a result, you're not following through with the commitment of me being salaried, which is a pretty wild argument. There aren't many people who believe it. And I think if you took it to an employment lawyer and someone gave this to him, they would sort of laugh it off, to be totally honest. I'm surprised that the Third Circuit Court took it. But, you know, that's, they did. Um, and the court said, well, an employer doesn't violate the conditions of having a predetermined amount paid each week by deducting from an employee's PTO. Because when they, deduct, when they dock the PTO, but not the base pay, it, the predetermined amount doesn't change. And as a result, that's sort of the expectation surrounding this. 
but it is an interesting court case and one that you don't really expect to see. Um, I know that often people will uh, talk about the idea that they should be paid OT on, on PTO. And oftentimes that happens. Uh, but I, it's not one that I, that's where you sort of where it could fall afoul um, or, you know, make the not fall afoul, but make the uh, argument a bit murkier. But here it's very clear with the salary with respect to salary is that you no, absolutely not. The um, the PTO deductions aren't a violation of FLSA. What do you think about today's video? Please uh, comment down below. Like, share, and subscribe. It really helps out. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye, guys.